Hey guys, Waterfaller41 here, and in today's video, we're going to be replacing the third brake light on my 2020 Ram Rebel with a brake light from Evil Manufacturing. So this is a company I actually found on Instagram. They have a, a complete line of custom off-road equipment between bumpers, side steps, rock sliders, and third brake lights. So this is a third brake brake light assembly that they manufacture for the 2019 and newer Ram trucks and what this does is it gives you the ability to mount three up to three Baja design s2 lights in your third brake light position so outside of providing you mounting points for those brake lights they also give you two lights that are gonna take place uh, or take the place of your your white reverse LEDs that are up in your factory third brake light and then the lower LEDs here I think these are the red ones for the brake I might have them reversed, but ultimately you have a set of brake lights and a set of white lights. So what that means is you're gonna be replacing this brake light you'll have. So right now we have white lights on each side that go on when we're in reverse, and then we got the center brake light. These lights are wired up to take the place of those lights. So pick this up from Evil Manufacturing. Then I reached out to my buddies at Endless Performance up in Wisconsin, and I ordered a set of Baja design lights from them. So this is the first time I've ever ordered Baja design lights. But here is what we're looking at. So like I said, we have the ability to put three of those S2s inside this bracket. So you have a lot of options on how you could do that. You could go with just a spot in the middle. You can go with spots all over the place. You can go with floods all over the place. It's really, the world is your oyster on this one. And even if you get the lights from the factory or from Baja Designs with the spot lens on there, you can always replace those lens with clear ones, with uh, combo one so a fog or a flood on one side and a spot on one side or you can get the whole thing as a floodlight but for my application i'm going to do a spotlight in the middle and then i'm going to do a combo driving on the side and a combo driving on this side and essentially what i'm going to do is i'm going to have this guy mounted that one in the middle so it's got the clear lens this is my spot and then these are combos so one side is set up as a flood the other side set up as a spot so i'll do a floodlight here spot 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 flood so it gives me a wide view plus I'll have that hot spot in the center for when I flip the switch on these lights we're gonna do this project in two phases the first phase is mounting those guys into this bracket and getting this bracket installed on this truck so if you have been following my Instagram you know that this is probably not a project for the faint of heart there's a little bit of cutting involved a little bit of grinding to make those lights fit in the bracket but also make that bracket fit on the truck Nothing too excessive, but there is some grinding and some cutting required, so certainly not for the faint of heart. So like I said, we're gonna do this in two phases. So the first thing we're gonna do is talk about how we're gonna make sure that our S2 lights fit inside this bracket, and then we'll take this bracket over to the truck and start working on mounting it and removing the OEM one, and I'll show you where you need to start cutting in order to make this guy fit. But let's dive a little bit more into the bracket itself because one thing, one comment I saw a lot when I started sharing pictures of this was, hey, that's a good way to stop the third brake light from leaking because you're replacing the gasket and you most certainly are. So this is the backside of the Evil Manufacturing light and there is a huge gasket all on the edge here. It's a quality rubber one. So that's gonna protect all the wiring and everything and it provides a nice seal all around the edges and you're gonna be you basically screw it in from each side. So when you screw, when you install this guy, you're gonna install it on the side there, on the side there, that's gonna push everything and compress that, that gasket here and make sure everything's sealed off nicely. Then when you mount the lights or the S2s to the bracket itself, they seal themselves because they have O-rings on the back side of these lenses. So then everything's basically waterproof at the end of the day. So they it comes pre-wired for those brake and reverse lights. So you got a white and blue, which is gonna be for your brake and your reverse light. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then you have a black and that's your ground so these lights need to be grounded so we're going to rob one of the grounds up in that factory harness and we're going to use it for here and then we're going to wire these up to the factory feed and then we should be good to go so that'll be part one of the wiring part two of the wiring is then making sure we have the wires for these guys all the way up to our trigger four plus so my trigger four plus brain is sitting up in the engine compartment so what i'm ultimately going to have to do is run a wire from or two wires a positive and a negative from the light here drop it down and let's just pretend we're on the driver's side so i'm going to run a wire here drop it down the c pillar it's going to run all along the floor go up bounce through the firewall and then it'll connect into my trigger for controller okay so let's talk about popping these guys into the bracket so again these are my baja design s2 lights that i purchased from endless performance these need some modification in order to fit in this bracket 
you got to keep in mind that these are relatively big lights for the amount of space that you have in this bracket, but also behind that brake light. This brake light was never set up to fit big old lights like this. So we're going to be doing some repurposing of things. But again, this is where it comes in for the fact that this isn't for the faint heart. If you haven't really worked around lights before, or if you're uncomfortable grinding things up, by all means, take this to a professional installer because this is the part where this is no longer a plug and play. There is a few things that need to be modified on these lights, this bracket, and the truck itself in order to make all three of these things work together. So first thing we need to do is we're going to have to remove the bezel on the outside of this S2. And the reason we're doing that is because we need to basically make sure that lens can fit in here and we don't need these bezels anymore. So I'm going to pop that off with an Allen wrench and then that should pop in here. However, once you get that bezel removed and you get the lens and everything set up to pop it into place on the bracket itself, one other thing that you're going to notice real quickly, or at least on mine, there's a bottom metal lip that runs along the bottom edge of the brake light bracket. And what happens is that gets in the way of this lip that goes around the S2. So this lip goes around the top and the bottom of the S2s. So in order to make sure that you clear that, so these lenses sit nice and flush in here, so the holes line up. So these four mounting holes here will line up with these four holes in the bracket itself. You'll need to take, you'll need to grind off this lip on the bottom of the light. So that's what we're looking at here. So you can see on the silver area, I basically put it on a bench grinder and just ground it down until this edge here is flush with the rest of the light. That way there was enough material moved so it cleared here nicely. What I notice is without grinding that down and trying to fit these lights and line them up and everything, um, you run the chance of cross threading these screws because the screw holes don't line up very good. This is something that you want a very good seal on. And in order to do that, you want to make sure that you grind that down to make sure it clears everything. So let me go ahead and get these bezels removed and we'll get those guys tossed into the bracket. I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so our light is set up. So you can see I did the spot in the middle and then my combos on each side. And what I did is I made sure that that lens was, the flood side of it was on the outside. That way it's gonna, I guess, flood more of the light that way. And then these will complement the center spotlights. So now the next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna remove our factory rear brake light. And that's gonna be four Phillips head screws to pop that guy out. But before you start messing around with electrical in this truck, especially since we're gonna be tapping into some of the existing wiring, go ahead and unplug your negative battery cable on the battery to give the system some time to kind of de-energize. That way you don't mess around with any of the airbag stuff or anything like that. Because when we start to run that wire from here down to the C pillar to the floor, through the firewall, into the engine bay, we are gonna be going past, I think, two airbags on our way there, as well as through the firewall. So you wanna make sure that everything's de-energized so you don't run into any issues. But let's go ahead and get this guy folded over. We'll hop into the bed of the truck and we'll start removing this guy and we'll take a look at the wiring there. And then we'll start with getting everything fitted in here. So like I said, this is still phase one. So structurally we're working on getting everything to fit into the third brake opening. Uh, phase two of this is gonna be the wiring when we actually take the wires, run everything down. That, in my opinion, is the easier part of this. The harder part is just to make sure that this guy fits. So let's go. All right, now we're in the back of the truck and this is the factory brake light. So we got one, two, three, four of these Phillips head screws that need to pop out. And then this guy isn't even clipped in, it's just screwed in. So this should slide straight out. And I had this off the other day messing around with everything. So this should be pretty easy to remove. But yeah, again, four Phillips heads and this guy will pop out. So let's go ahead and pull that guy out real quick. All right, once those screws are removed, all you gotta do is just basically grab this guy and give it a little assistance and then it should come straight out. So there you go. Now we are out and only one harness is holding this into place. Ignore this guy right now, that's just the fish wire I ran the other day when I was testing everything out. But again, those four screws go in here, 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 and here. When we go back in with our Evo manufacturing brake light, we're only gonna use this guy and that guy because we're gonna need to modify right here and right here to make room for our new S2s. Again, not for the faint of heart, we're gonna cut a little bit of metal on the truck. So let me go ahead and pop this harness off of here. I won't be able to do it one handed, but let's pop this guy off here. Let me get that tape removed here and we'll talk about the wiring here because there's something I want to check before we go ahead and start running the wires for everything else. 
but all right now that we have our factory third brake light removed and i just took the wires and i tucked them back inside so it's out of the way one thing we need to do now is we need to start grinding some of this metal and in particular we need to focus on this area here and this area here like i said this section of the truck was not made to fit s2s so we're going to need to do a little bit of modification to make sure that the depth of those s2s clears the metal right now if i were to push those things in here the center one clears perfectly fine but the side ones actually end up running too close to here and the reason that is is because on the bracket themselves they sit rather close to the center light and they end up bumping up against this guy right here so what i'm going to do is just basically grind straight down here straight across here so take out this little tab here and then do the same thing up i'm gonna go up from this corner and then i'm just gonna cut right across here i'll probably do it with a dremel and a cutoff wheel that should be plenty to remove it but let's go ahead and start cutting that and then we'll figure out exactly how much i need to do this is more of a we're gonna cut some we're gonna try it out and then cut some more if it doesn't work and just keep going until we can get it to fit i don't want to cut this whole thing off which you certainly can do um because you don't need these mounting points anymore, but I wanna be able to go back to factory if I ever need to. And the way to do that is to keep this guy here because I, I want those four mounting points and I wanna retain the two middle ones. All right, so our cutting is done, and all we did is basically just trimmed out the bottom here on this ledge, and then we went straight up and made it kind of a writing up there. Did the same thing on this side, and that's giving us enough clearance for everything. Last thing I did before we start to talk through the wiring side of things is I took a touch-up paint pen. So I have one from, what is this, Automotive Touch-Up. It's the same body color, and what I did is I just went ahead and dabbed everything that was exposed metal up here. Probably not needed, but just kind of a peace of mind here. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to go inside and I'm going to show you how to re undo some of the roof liner because now we're going to start talking through what that wiring run is going to look like. And in order to do that, you need to pull that roof liner down a little bit and then you need to get access behind the C pillar here. So let's get everything down there, go into the inside of the truck and start diving into the wiring side of things here. But from a structural standpoint, everything is good to go. So that is ready to go, but we're gonna leave it open now so we can get everything wired up here. All right, so third brake light's right here. And in order to make sure that we get that wire from over here, down our C pillar, we're, need, we're gonna need to get some access in here so we can fish some wire through there and then have enough room to pull everything down. So in order to do that, we're gonna need to drop the headliner just a little bit. And honestly, it's a super easy process. So the first thing you need to do is go over behind your, on each side of your, your rear window or on the inside of your rear headrest if you don't have a rear window, sliding window, there's these little uh, plastic pieces here. Just go ahead and grab those. Those guys just drop straight down. It's a clip and all it's doing is uh, concealing a screw up there. So there's a Torx T20 bit or T20 screw up inside there. Same thing inside here. So we're gonna need to undo that guy. Then we come over here on the C pillar itself and we take a flathead, go ahead and just pop this guy out. So actually I wanna point out something here real quick. So these two little marks here, these are not for me. I suspect this pillar has to be removed when they do the rear window. So I'm gonna to have to talk with my dealer here because there's some marks here that I'm not too big of a fan of and it looks pretty unsightly. That's not from me doing any sort of work in here. That's from, I think, when they removed my third window when it was cracked to replace it. So I'm gonna have to talk with them. That's sloppy. Anyway, back to what we're working on. So again, this is just a screw cover. So that thing just pops out like that. And then there's a T20 bit right inside there. So again, a Torx T20 bit will undo this guy. And then the screw here, the screw on the other side as well. And then what we do is we go over to this guy right here same thing, we're gonna use a flathead screwdriver. Let's see. Yep, we'll use a flathead screwdriver to get right onto that screw. And what that'll do is it'll basically loosen up this corner. So after we loosen up these guys, we could go ahead, push the, the roof up a little bit and start pulling on this panel. But again, make sure you get that screw out of there. And this panel is only held in there with pressure clips. 
So be careful when you're pulling it because there's a tab on here that goes up behind the roof. I'm not sure what the right order is, but basically what I found to do is I pulled this guy out as far as I needed it and then just basically pushed the roof up and over it so everything cleared. And then when I went to reassemble it, I just had to pull this down a little bit. So this is not something you're going to want to do when everything is cold. Definitely something you're going to do when everything is warm. So let's get all these Torx screws out of here and let's pry this guy off a bit and then we could start to get access here because like I said, I already have a power wire run through there, but in hindsight, what I should have done is run both a power and a ground. So I'm gonna run a black and a green wire through here. So that gives me my ground for my lights. I didn't want to steal the ground off the headlight or off the power harness for the uh, um, for the, the lights that are there now. I want to run my own ground for those S2s. So let's do it. Okay, now that we got all the screws out, so again, we removed the one from the coat hanger, I guess we'll call it the two from the back so there's one there one there and those little covers do they do pop off then we remove the guy from the c pillar now we're good to go and the roof is pretty loose so the next thing you're going to need to do is one make sure you unplug the negative cable on your battery if you haven't already and the reason why is there's an airbag sitting right about here it's a curtain airbag and you don't want that guy energized when you're messing around in here so the second thing you're going to do is just find a an angle on here and just start prying and this guy's basically gonna pull straight off I think there's like clips right in the middle here and they're pretty strong so don't be afraid to give it a little muscle but again if you're finding it too hard to pull them off uh, be careful and maybe take a breather and come back at it but again there's tangs in here and uh, all you gotta do is just basically pull this panel straight off and we're gonna be good we're not gonna remove it completely because we don't need to we're just gonna pull it off enough so we can get access in behind there and I could run that black wire in there and I can show you kind of how I already ran the power wire for the lights because this is what's gonna we're gonna run it from here that wire is gonna drop down here and then it's gonna drop into the door sills and then from there it's pretty smooth sailing so let's go ahead and get this guy popped off or at least opened up a little bit and then start working on the wiring all right, so let's talk about wiring. So I changed my plan here a few times and I think I'm gonna stick with my current plan right now. So we have all these plugs on the back of the Baja Design lights. I wanna retain them because I like to be able to remove this guy and have the plugs in there so I could cleanly remove everything and not have to cut any of the wires. So I wanna keep these in place. That said, when I ordered these lights, the pair or the two lights that came in the pair, so those driving combos, actually came with a wiring harness. Now that wiring harness is set up to power this light and to power that light. So I'm missing a harness for this guy. But in this kit, that guy came with some plugs to make your own. So I already have one wire run through there. I'm gonna run a second wire through there. So I got some red uh, wire here. And then I'm basically just gonna build that harness in place, put this plug on the end of it, also run these two guys through there. So then I have three plugs located up there to power all these three lights. And then what I'll do is I'll basically pull everything down. So I already moved this panel here. I'll pull everything down somewhere over here and make all the connections with butt connectors. That way everything's down here and accessible instead of having to make all the connections up there. Ultimately what I wanna avoid is having too many wiring connection or wiring harnesses hanging around up there because I think at some point in time, everything's gonna vibrate and chatter and whatnot. So we're gonna try to avoid that by running all the wires down here and trying to make it as far as we can before we start making those terminal connections. So let me get a red wire run through here plus those Baja design wires. And then once we got that, we could button up everything once we get that connection here. But like I said, let me build that one harness in place and then we'll get the other ones run through here. And then we can start with running the wires through the rest of the truck. All right, here is my lighting or wiring setup before it goes in the truck. So you can see I have that harness that came with Baja Designs on one side, the harness on the other side. And what I went ahead and did, instead of having to run a third harness through here, I'm just gonna run these two. I went ahead and pigtailed and spliced in a short little length and I used one of those uh, extra connectors that they give you with the single S2 Pro. So now I have three plugs, two wires that are ultimately gonna pull through the side there, drop down. So a couple nights ago, I was messing around just to kind of figure out my, whiting, my wiring route and I already ran a fish wire up there. So that green wire there is what I'm gonna to use to pull these wires through the third brake opening down. Let's see, through the third brake opening down this way. Let's get this guy out of here. We don't need him anymore. So through the third brake opening across the roof liner and then down here. So that wire you can see is basically right here and I have it taped into place. I'm gonna pop this out and basically use this to pull my new wires through. 
and then I'm gonna see how far that will get me. I'm hoping it gets me to at least inside the sill plate here because then I can make my connections a lot easier. But if not, I can make them somewhere up in here. But I got a ton of wire here, so I think I'll be able to make it down through there. So let's go ahead and get this green wire freed up and use him to pull our wires through here. So be very careful. Um, right up there, that little guy right there, that's your airbag. You wanna make sure that when you're pulling these wires, you pull them towards the back of the roof liner and then down that way because this airbag goes this way and that's what protects everyone in the back seat if you ever were to get in an accident. So avoid that at all costs. And again, if you haven't already, by all means, unplug that battery and let it discharge before you start messing around here. You don't wanna be tinkering around by stuff like that with uh, the battery fully connected. All right, so we have our S2 wiring harness hung. So you can see the plugs right there coming out, oop, right there, coming out of the opening. That wire cuts through the back of the headliner down that way, and then I have it pulled down through the C pillar. So what I'm gonna do here is just kinda, I'm gonna leave everything open for now until I get everything wired up completely, but I have that wire run down here. It cuts behind the trim here. I pulled up the sill plate here, and basically what I'm gonna do is pull this wire as far as I can down here and probably make my connections probably somewhere right here. That way, going this way through the rest of the truck, I only have two wires. I'll have a positive and a negative for my S2s. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hop back up in the bed and we're gonna finish wiring the brake light because if you remember, we have a ground here for the lights and then we got a white and a blue liar wire which is gonna power our brake and our reverse lights. So we could quickly go ahead and do those and just leave this light just basically dangling up there we could test it so we don't get too far ahead of ourselves before we get these connections in there so uh evil manufacturing provides these little terminals these are nice nice plug and play but what i'm gonna do is clip these guys off and i'm gonna replace them with posi taps i like posi taps a lot more uh they're they're still a plug and play option um they work just as good as these crimps but they're a little bit cleaner and for the harness, they allow you to use the harness as is. So I don't need to clip that plug off the harness. I could just use those posi taps as a side tap onto the factory wire and they'll hang off to the side like that. So let's go ahead and get this guy up there and get our posi taps ready to go to wire up these guys. And then we could, mm, let's see, maybe we could test this guy out and maybe we should test this guy out before we get too far. So we might wire this guy up, get the battery plugged in temporarily and check the lights before we do anything uh, additional here. All right, so I went ahead, clipped those terminals off here and stripped the wires on the back of my Evil MFG light. Um, so again, you have a blue light or a blue wire, you have a white wire and a black wire. This is a ground. The blue wire is for your brake lights and then the white wire is for your cargo lamp. So if you go into the instructions, they do give you what those blue and white wires are for. They tell you if there's a yellow wire, what that one's for as well, that's for driving lights. We don't have that on our truck. So when you have a 2019 and newer Ram, these are the factory wire colors that team up with the evil manufacturing wires. So there's a white with green stripe. That one will tie in with the blue wire. And then there's a white with tan stripe and that one's gonna tie in with the white wire on the uh, third brake light. So if we come over here and look at the harness, you can see the top of the harness has the white with tan and then the bottom has the white with green. And then there's two grounds in between. So I'm gonna grab one of those grounds and then I'm gonna side tap uh, the tan and then the green striped wires for the blue and the white wires. So here is the posi tap that I'm going to use. So this is what they look like when they're assembled, but I have one taken apart here. So this gray end is what straddles the wire that you're tapping into. This little cylinder part has a needle on it and that needle is what stabs into the factory wire so you can grab the signal. And then you take that wire that's stripped, you thread it through this little hole here and you screw it into the, the little I guess the barrel of the connector and that's how you do your posi tap and connect uh, all the wires together. I like this because it's a good sound fit but it's also not permanent so I could pull this out if I ever need to and I could pull it out in parts so I could just loosen up the wire that's going into it or I could loosen up the pin that's going into the actual uh, tapped wire. So I'm going to go ahead and install three of these, one for a ground, one for parking and one for my cargo lamp and then we could get those temporarily wired up to this guy and we could test out our lights with the battery on here. All right, so I have my posi taps installed and I have everything ready to go. So like I said, the blue is tapped into the white with green, the black is tapped into one of the grounds, and then the white is tapped into the white with tan. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the battery and we're gonna test out, but in theory, 
this section of lights should work as well as these two. And I'm not quite sure which ones are the brakes, which ones are the cargo lamps. We'll figure that one out soon. I suspect cargo lamps, brake lamps, but we'll figure that one out. So let me go ahead and get that battery temporarily plugged in here so we can test out the lights and then, uh, and then we'll go from there. But again, I wanted to do this just to make sure that I'm not getting too far ahead of myself before testing everything. I don't want to button everything back up, go to power everything on, and then find out that I got a loose connection or a connection that's not functioning. So let me get the battery connected and we'll test these guys out. All right, so I have everything temporarily wired up and I have the battery installed. So let me go ahead and show you what the cargo light and what the brake lights look like. So this is the cargo light. On, off, on, off. Ooh, I pointed to the wrong ones. The yellowish ones are the cargo lamps. All right, so those are on, off. They work fine. Now let's hit the brakes. So there you go. The top two LEDs are the brakes. So we'll do brakes, cargo lamp, cargo lamp off, brakes off. Everything works. So now we are good to go. So now we're good to go to get this guy thrown in there, plugged in, because now everything else as far as wiring is gonna be down below because we have all our plugs and everything connected. We just gotta connect everything up here, close up the ceiling, and start working in the door sill as far as wiring up the S2s. So let's get going on that. All right, so everything is installed. One word of advice and a lesson learned from me, leave yourself enough wire on the harnesses here so you can pull the wires out of each of the respective sockets or holes. That way everything is easier to connect. I barely had enough to get this guy connected because his wire obviously went all the way from there to there. And since I didn't leave enough on that harness, it was kind of a pain in the butt connect it, but ultimately everything's connected. So everything is tightened down. I went ahead and used two of the four factory pieces of hardware, so the screws there, to go right into those uh, metal clips on the back and everything is in there solid. This thing's not moving a bit. So everything's really dirty, so I apologize for that, but that light looks awesome. So the hard part is done. So getting this thing to structurally fit in the roof line of the Ram is done. So now what we need to do is go back inside. Let's go ahead and tie back up the roof liner. And then we could start working on running the two wires to my trigger four plus underneath the hood. So then we could give the S2 some power here. But we already know that these lights work, these lights work, and we're good to go. So let's get the hood liner button back up. So we're gonna install those screws again, and then we'll zip tie that wire harness or the wire harnesses that we dropped down the C pillar so they don't bounce around inside there. And then we'll make the connection so you can see the wires hanging out down there. So I'm probably gonna make the connection probably right midway in that in that sill plate. There's plenty of room to tuck everything down in there. And then we'll just run everything up each sill up the firewall and then into the engine bay. So let's... All right, so we have the light installed. We have all of the plugs connected for each of the S2 lights. We have our top and our bottom uh, factory lights installed. So we got the brake and we got the cargo lights working. I went ahead and screwed in everything in the for the roof. So just tighten everything back up here. Basically torque screw, torque screw, torque screw here. Make sure everything's attached here. Uh, sometimes this in, this uh, weather stripping gets pulled out, so just make sure this is all pushed down. Uh, yeah, see, like right there. So we gotta clip everything back in there. But uh, now that we have everything installed here, we have our wires run down this little channel here, and then they pop out right here. Unfortunately, I have to run and pick up my kids from some birthday parties, so we're gonna have to save the wiring for tomorrow. But we have everything, we got the hard part done. The hard part is, getting that light installed on the top of the truck itself and getting the wire run to an accessible location. So once we're past this, it's literally just taking those two wires, so the positive and negative, running them through that door sill, running them through this door sill, so you can already see my fish wire still there, popping them up through the firewall, and once it gets into the firewall, we're gonna connect it into our trigger uh, four plus and the engine bay. But it is all downhill at this point, Unfortunately, I'm just running out of time to work on it today. So light looks awesome. Everything's functional for now with the exception of the S2s. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up all my junk here and get on over to my son's birthday party to pick him up or son's friend's birthday party to pick them up. Uh, but it all right, took a brief break there, but it's time to get back to wiring up our S2 lights. So quick recap as to where we're at. So we got the, the housing for the third brake light installed on the truck. 
we have all of the wires connected. The cargo and the brake lights are working inside the, th the third brake light. Um, then we have the wires. So I ran down two harnesses for those S2. So I, I tied in what two of the lights together and then I ran two harnesses down here. I connected those harnesses. So what we're left with right now is a positive and negative, which is the power that goes, let's see, it goes up the C pillar. It cuts over towards the rear of the hood or the roof liner. And then that's where it connects it to the S2 lights. Now I do have the harnesses just kind of dangling in there right now. And I drove around, I drove over some pretty rough roads and I was curious if I was gonna hear those things knocking up against the hood. I don't hear them at all, so we're good to go. So we're just gonna leave them how they were in there with just everything kind of shoved in on top of the headliner. So like I said, we got that wire run right here. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna run a positive and negative from this little trim piece or from the sill. We're gonna run it through the driver's side here. So it's gonna run that way and then it's go, gonna hop up and then it's gonna pop through our firewall. So just like with my stereo power, so we gotta get a light down in there, but there's a grommet down here and we're gonna try to poke through those wires um, and then I'm gonna grab the two positive and negative. We're gonna run that. Uh, we'll probably run it down this way, uh, down between the batteries. It's gonna cut around and then ultimately it's gonna tie into the third channel on my trigger four plus here. So like, all right, so I have my wire pulled from the rear uh, driver's sill through the B pillar and then I got it to about right here. And what's gonna happen is there's not enough room to squeeze that wire down in here or at least easily. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up this little channel here and the easiest way to do that is just take a panel tool, pry up all these carpet things and then go through and there's tangs. There's one there, 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 and then I believe there's one more. And then this thing just flips open. I can lay my wire in there close it back up and then I'll make my final connection here to the last wires I'm going to do the home run up to the trigger in the uh, in the engine compartment but again I'll be able to use this wire up until about there and then from there I'll take it up with two home runs through the firewall and then right up to my trigger and then our wiring is done we'll just clean up everything and power up our s2s so all right so now that we have our wire run from let's see here the wire comes down, cuts through that sill plate, cuts through this sill plate. Right now it is dangling right here. So we moved our light since it's nighttime and everything into the engine compartment because I want to show you where that wire is going to pop out through the firewall. So if you look down here and I got a long poking stick here. So this is the main harness that cuts through the firewall. You can see the rubber grommet around it. Underneath there is a rubber nipple from the factory. So what you end up doing is you cut that off and then you can run wires to the bottom of that rubber nipple. And once you poke through it with like a stiff wire or a fish tape, you'll be able to pull wires between the firewall and the cabin. Now, I already use that for my stereo power. I think I have a eight gauge or a four gauge wire cutting through there. So what I'm gonna try to do is take a really stiff, solid copper wire and just poke it through right next to it. And that way I can get the my fish wire into the cabin I'll tape up the two wires that I want to pull through and then pull everything through. This is a rubber boot, so it's pretty tight. It shouldn't be an issue as far as sealing it up. Uh, I don't have any concerns. What I may try to do is try to get it through the same hole as that power one and then just throw a zip tie around everything to really uh, tighten everything up. But yeah, let me poke through my wire here and then uh, we will get everything fished through the firewall. But so let's go ahead and get my little fish wire run through that guy and then I'll show you where it pops out inside the engine bay or inside the cabin. All right, so we are popped through the firewall here. I just wanna show you where it's at. So if you see right here, I have this metal rod poking through here. Actually what that is, is a uh, shish kebab stick. So it's a metal rod with kind of a pointed front of it and it made it really easy to poke through this uh, silicone boot or rubber boot here. Um, so it made a nice sharp cut through here. So you've got to be really careful of the wires in there, but once you kind of poke through there, uh, you're good to go. So what I'm going to do now is tape a skinny piece of wire onto this side, since I can't really get much in there and pull that wire back into the cabin. And then from that side, then I'm going to tape that wire to my other two wires. I'm going to pull back through here because, um, this is kind of, I remember from when I did this power here, this is kind of a pain in the butt to pull wires through. So I'm going to pull a skinny wire through first and then I'll pull the larger wires through uh, second here. That way I could put some 
like dish soap or something like that to make it slide through this uh, silicone boot easier. And then uh, we'll be good to go. So I'm gonna run that wire. Um, not really sure what route I'm gonna take yet. It makes the most sense to kind of pop up right over here with that guy. Um, since I ultimately need to end up right over here. So I might just be messing around with getting that thing in the fender here. Um, but we'll figure it out. But let's get the hard part out of the way and let's get that wire pulled through. So like I said, I'm gonna pull probably what, a 16 gauge wire back into the cabin and then I'll pull the two 14 gauges back the other way once I, that hole is made a little bit bigger every time you pull through there. So let's do that and then I'll show you underneath the dash once I get some light inside the cabin where that wire pops out. All right, lighting's a little bad here, but we have our little uh, fish wire run through the firewall gasket there. So if you have trouble trying to get wires through there, I know it's a really hard space to work in. One thing that you could do with your wires to help it slide through there is lube them up. Uh, and the easiest way to do that is with Dawn dish soap or whatever dish soap this is. So I put enough of that on there, it's kind of goopy, but it basically made sliding through that uh, rubber boot much easier. So now that we have that wire pulled through here, remember we used our our kebab fork. So here's our kebab stick here. And the wire runs right up, way up behind. Uh, there's a wire harness right here, and then you can see the boot right up on top there. So the wire pops between, my wire that I just ran for the lights pops between the main wire harness for the truck and my amp power wire. So what I'm gonna do now is pull this down a little bit and then I'm gonna tape up those two 14 gauge wires to it. So then I can pull those wires through the firewall and then I can make final connections at the trigger. So, Okay, so I am gonna use channel three on my trigger four. I have my wires pulled through here, so my red is my positive, my green is my ground. I'm gonna take them off of my little fish wire here, and then what I'm gonna do is connect them to this piece of wire that came in my trigger four kit, because what this will allow me to do is plug then right into the trigger four third channel terminal. So I already got a 10 amp fuse on there, so we're good to go on that. But again, all you gotta do is just run that positive and negative right into the trigger controller because the trigger acts as the relay, but also the power supply and the power, um, the, the fuse. So every channel on the trigger four plus is fused and 10 amps should be perfectly fine for my S2s. So um, that leaves me with one extra channel left and I haven't done anything with channel four, I don't know. If you got any ideas, let me know. But we're gonna reuse channel three because that'll be my rear lights. I had rear lights on here. We removed them because the Corsa tips were uh, hitting the brackets. So um, hence the whole reason behind going with the S2s up high. So let me go ahead and clip this and then I'm gonna splice in, uh, where, where did it go? Splice in what's left of this salvage harness. So this is for my old reverse lights. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this wire and I'm gonna route it behind the battery bracket here and then it's gonna pop out right around here that way I could just take this guy connect to that and then we're gonna be good to go that way everything's concealed behind here I don't like when things are just dangling around the engine compartment so if I could hide them I'm gonna do that and in this case that's what my plan is all right so we are wired so basically I ran so my little poker stick here I ran the wire up through that rubber grommet and then instead of cutting through the fender like I was gonna originally do it I ended up uh, wrapping the wire around the battery this way and then making a big loop here. And then you see I make my final connection right here. The reason I had to do that is because I didn't have enough wire on my trigger harness to make the connection and then tuck everything back in here. It's a really tight fit to get in here and you basically need to make the connection on this side. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough wire and I wanted to reuse that piece of uh, my trigger harness. So I have my drip loop at least over here so that's not the end of the world um, but everything is connected again I'm gonna run channel 3 this is the channel that I was using for my uh, my old reverse lights so the sticker on the controller inside the cab is gonna stay the same which is perfect it saves me that much work which is probably nothing but everything is connected so real quick let's just do a quick rundown of the wiring here so the brake light and the cargo light are tapped into the factory wires up here with the posi taps. They also use one of the black wires for their ground. Then my S2s, two of them T into one harness and then another one is served by a separate harness. Those two harnesses travel this way and then they drop down the C pillar here and then they travel along the sill plate. They tuck around the B pillar. 
again up the driver's head sill plate then they cut up this way and then they pop through the firewall right about here and then we bring them through the cabin here or through the firewall up here tuck it around the battery and then ultimately tie into my trigger four plus so let me get everything closed up fire up the truck and then we can take a look and make sure that those guys work all right so truck is on we're ready to go to test out the lights so i have the trigger four plus app fired up so if you remember i have my lower grill light so we'll hit that one on and off i have my ditch lights so you see those guys go on and off now we have our new rear lights so let's go ahead and test those guys out boom they're bright but unfortunately the lights on here so i can't really give them a true test of how bright they are but they're on so uh, if you remember the trigger four allows you to do something really cool and that's called the get your attention lights so you could turn each of those channels on the strobe so if i do that one i could even do my ditch lights so if i turn those on the strobe all of that can be done through the app now i also have the trigger controller inside that i could also control these things which i use primarily most of the time but for the sake of showing off the light here that's how good they work so let's turn off the light that's a hell of a hot spot there because again we have that spotlight in between and then the flood so you can see the floods are hitting me way over here so that's awesome uh, i'm gonna take it out for a drive and just kind of get a sense for what that flood looks like but on off on off works awesome and if you haven't checked out the trigger four plus or they have a six channel one as well definitely check it out i absolutely love this controller this thing was so worth the money because it made wiring up everything super simple because it's basically an all-in-one so the relays the power supply everything is all located inside that controller so all you do is run a, the black and the red wire to it connect everything make sure you have the correct amperage fuse in there and this is what you get you get your lights so let's fire up everything bright so this is just all aux lights that's not headlights at all so we'll turn off this guy turn off everything and we are left with the lower grill so let me get everything cleaned up we'll take it out for a test drive and then i'll show you what that what those lights look like um in the rearview mirror and i guess we'll we'll shine them through and take a look at what they look like with the uh, camera so let me get everything cleaned up, get all the tools put away, and we could take the truck for a test drive. All right, so we took the truck out and I'm actually at the road where I tested out my original reverse lights, so it's probably a pretty good benchmark. So let's go ahead and fire those guys up. I got my trigger app right here, so we are going to hit that guy and lit up. So the first thing you're gonna notice is it lights up the cargo area of the truck awesome. Like, I don't even think I need my bed lights anymore. I guess I do because if I have my tunnel cover closed, um, I have an option for lighting them up. But let's take a look at the long run of it. So one thing you're gonna notice is the bed does block a little bit of the light and that's because obviously it's shining down and there's a cutoff hitting right here and you're obviously killing some of your light right behind you. But these things cover nicely. Um, for the size of these lights, um, this is a nice even spread and that's probably going about a hundred yards down the road. So a perfect light throw. So let's uh, turn those off and on again. So the light might be off a little bit, but that is a pure white light you're seeing there. Um, I think, I don't know why it's tinted like that one. But anyway, anyone, everyone was asking about what the throw is of those lights. So if I were to do it again, would I go with these lights? Uh, probably. Um, the other thing I might consider in the long term is maybe switching these out with amber or there's, they have a green one as well or a green lens for the spot. So I think that might be pretty cool. Again, these aren't coming on when I'm in reverse. So color really doesn't matter. I'm going to be using these off road anyway. Um, I apologize. It's really cold right now here in Illinois. Uh, we, we got snow last night. It was 60 degrees a couple days ago and it snowed. But anyway, that's what the lights look like. So one more time, let's take off. On. And again, I don't have reverse lights on. My car is just sitting here idling. So off, on. And like I said, that's probably shining about 100 yards down the road. So these things throw quite a bit of light considering the size of them. Um, so again, I might play with some of the lenses on here. Maybe I swap all three of them out with spot lenses or I go to combos on all of them. 
who knows? Uh, but that's the beauty of these Baja Design S2s is you got some flexibility. So if you don't like the lights as they are today, you could certainly swap them out for uh, a different lens. So amber comes in all of the patterns. So that combo, that flood, the uh, yeah, the flood, and then the spot. But then the red, green, and blue lights only come in spot. So I'm not sure if they're ever planning on coming out with the other lenses in those colors. But um, I guess food for thought. So anyway, I'll leave a link to these lights, the bracket, everything I did, everything I added to the truck here down in the description below. But let me know what you think. I mean, this was by far one of the most extensive installs I've done so far on this truck. I hope to do a few more installs, probably as crazy as this one. Uh, but what do you think? Do you think this is worth it? Um, it looks awesome. This light looks killer. It's a ton of light thrown out the back. Obviously, it does kill some of the light here with the pickup truck, with the, the fact that the bed of the truck is cutting off a lot of light here. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the installation of the light and the light output. Super happy with that. And just for kicks, let's go ahead and test out that the strobe. I can't do that too much. I'm right by a public road here, and pretty sure someone will come over and figure out what I'm doing here or ask me what I'm doing here. But anyway, that is the installation of the Evil Manufacturing Light. That is the throw of the S2s out of the Evil light bracket. Lights, spread, thumbs up. Thanks for watching.